Candace has a restraining order against Michael. He cannot have contact with her. Candace takes the stand. To show you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Ma'am, have a seat. Go ahead, Mr. McDonald. <coughs> First, Candace, I'd like to ask, how are our children doing? I've not seen them in over 400 days, in over a year, since last Christmas in 2016. How are Mason and Malia? Mason and Malia are Michael's children. Mason and Malia are doing well. Do they ever ask about their father? They do. And what do you tell them? Object to your honor. Hold that one. Um, I tell them that you love and miss them, and that when you start doing what you need to do, they can see you again. If you can't already tell, Candace is an angel. Do you think it's best for Mason and Leah not to have their father? Absolutely not. You don't believe that it's okay not to, for the kids not to see their father? No. I wish that they could see you. And let me ask you why? Certain things have happened and occurred that have... <sighs> when things don't go as planned, Michael has a tell. <sighs> that. <sighs> Did you deny letters to the children that were written to them and pictures that were drew? Of yes. superheroes and stuff? Yes. Why? The letters contain inappropriate information that children should never know or hear or read or see. So they never saw pictures that were drawn, just happiness and superheroes and different things. How are the kids' grades? Well, Mason's the only one in school. Mason's doing well in school. Is Malia still having rectal prolapses? Did she have surgery? Malia has not had one rectal prolapse in over a year and a half. Michael thinks that Candace's boyfriend, Joe, has raped their young daughter. Do, who do, what do they call your boyfriend? Do they call him daddy? Um, no, they call him Joe. On the day of, in October of 2016, there was a phone call that was placed that we had orders to to not, to, we had orders not to, to have any contact except for talking parents. Did you call from an unknown number asking for more money and, and, and to pay it and then you let let defendant call, call his children as it was ordered on the divorce decree so that he could have reasonable phone conversation with his kids? Did you make that call from an unknown number? Remember, this is Michael's argument for why he should have visitation privileges restored. I have never made any calls to the defendant from an unknown number. And there's records of that, okay? Hi, my name is Michael L. McDonald. I'm running for Assembly District 20. I'm running on the Family and Criminal Law Reform platform. Um, I have a lot of experience in a, bun a vast amount of industries. I used to do, I've been doing IT technolo uh, technology consulting for a long time. I used to work for the city of Las Vegas, and I did Boy State when I was in high school and learned about the process up in Carson City, helped pass MAC uh, mock legislation as a state senator up there. And uh, I believe that I'm a great candidate for the, that we can actually affect change. I plan on, on setting equal parenting or putting bills in place for setting equal parenting as a set standard. Uh, the DV laws, the bail amounts, the, there's all, so many things that need to be addressed. Our taxes, our, our businesses are being completely affected right now. So I hope to go up to Carson City and uh, affect change and help others get, get up there and, and work with both uh, cross platforms uh, and both across parties to affect that. And I would appreciate your vote. Again, my name is Michael. L. McDonald and for running for Assembly District 20. Did you, did you, did you not record on around and or around November after defendant paid and supposedly called from an owner number asking to speak to his children 
Did you just say that you're recording this call and that you're gonna and when and ask that uh, and said that you're gonna report it to authorities when he just asked to, to speak to the children? I'm sorry. Can you I don't Doctor Business feels the same way. Sorry. Can you I don't There was a phone call that was placed at a certain time to, to ask for, for to speak. Objection, Your Honor, lacks foundation. Okay, give us a little bit more foundation. Approximately when? November Approximately of what in year? November of 2016. Okay. After uh, the bill was paid, as as requested, did you not make a phone call, or did, did a phone call not come through in which you recorded and that you tried to put put in place to to record and to give to the police to, in order to throw in jail. Objection, Your Honor. Lex Foundation as to who, who's making a phone call, who's receiving a phone call, what numbers are being right. called. I, I, in the interest of efficiency, do you, does any of that ring a bell? I, I did record a phone call that, yes, I turned over to my domestic violence advocate. Okay. Michael has been charged with domestic violence in the past. On, on or around January of 2000, uh, January 12th of 2000, 17 did you did you and your parents enter the house enter the house on 5813 Maynard and break in and take prop take out dismantle a camera system and steal property that was that was of the defendants that Michael is not asking questions he is just being an asshole Let me show right, again for about the third or fourth time the issue that's on today is your request to modify custody. That is what we are doing. If I'm not going to admit exhibits about anything other than custody. So you can spend your time questioning her about things other than custody, and I'm gonna allow you to do that. But I'm not going to admit and overrule their objection about relevance because property and issues regarding the house are not on calendar today. The judge is beginning to have her judicial fill of Michael. Plaintiff, do you, do you, Candace, do you agree that Michael McDonald is a good and loving father of his children? No. 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 Did you not write a letter that saying how good of a father that he is and how much you're on a beyond the scope of this? I love it. So much of a, of a gift and from God that the, that he was to his children. Did you not write a letter as to that? I did write a letter in the way past, like maybe six years ago, seven years ago, that did say that, that was in my personal journal. Michael stole Candace's journal. That's how he knows about the old letter. Did you not do various Facebook posts and things saying the, to the parenting and loving this of, of their father? Um, I'm sure I probably made Facebook posts, but again, they were probably shortly after we were married or um, um, I just I don't recall specifically but I'm sure in the past I did make those posts doctor business is getting pretty tired of all this third person nonsense coming out of Michael's mouth did, did the did the defendant Mike this Mike McDonald the defendants is, is he a, was he the coach of his son's soccer team and, and of Malia's various activities no so he never went to soccer practice or coached he, he went NYS? To soccer, you went to soccer practice, yes, but you were never the coach. And Malia was a baby, nine months old, when we separated. So I don't know what activities you might be referring to for her. <laughs> Michael tells the same bunch of lies wherever he goes. Like this appearance on It's a Voluptuous Life with Wawa. In your 30s, that would be yeah. something that's just out of stress of all um, these things are happening I, to you, I guess. It, it's been a crazy, crazy story. I mean, I, I went through so many things with this divorce. I mean, you think that you have equal rights to your own children, mm -hmm. but if, if there's any reason they can take it from uh, uh, any kind of allegations or, mm -hmm. or anything, if you, if you have an addictive ex, they can take your kids from you. I mean, I have a crazy story. I mean, I, 
I had my kids every weekend for a year. And then, when, was the last, when was the last time you saw your kids? Oh, the last time I saw my kids was Christmas of 2016. Mm -hmm. well, let me tell time. you, my, my kids were my life. I, I was their coach. I, I love them. I teach them. I don't just put them in front of the iPad or, or TV. You know, we, we play with them. I, I teach them things. I taught my, mm -hmm. my son how to swim at a year and a half. My daughter, too. And oh, I ta wow. taught them how to... Uh, you know, their alphabet and their reading and writing, you know, I, just, I, I was very... And how old are they now? Three and six. The judge talks to Michael like he's a four-year-old. I submit to you that this is Michael's manipulation. The heartbroken father that can't afford a lawyer. The father that will do anything. A father fighting an unjust family court system. These things, at this moment, are untrue. So hold on. So you have, you have to ask a question and then give her time to answer it, okay? You asked about eight questions really quickly, okay? And we have to give her an opportunity to answer it, or she's going to get too confused and won't be able to answer them. So one at a time. So let's go back. Ask one question. Did the defendant, Mike McDonald, take care of his children while you attended night school? Um, I attended night school when I was pregnant with Malia for one semester, and yes, you did take care of Mason at night on Tuesdays when I had night school. Gold star for you, super dad. Did he not change diapers and fe fever and take care of her while you attended extra classes to, to finish your ASL degree mm -hmm. for the last three, that, those two to three years that you first um, I do not have a degree in ALS. And to your English degree. Um, did, did you, are you asking if I change, if you changed diapers? when I went to school? Did I, would I take, did I take care of the children? Now at this moment, Candace could have called Michael a terrible father. Instead, she says something much more devastating. I would say you children. attempted to take care of them. Was it done properly or well? Like, no, but I mean, I would say there were times, yes, that you changed a diaper. And that, my friends, is why Candace is an angel. So during the, the time that, of separation, did you not take a trip to, to Chicago and leave the kids with the defendant? With, with Mike and I did take a trip to Chicago for my best friend's wedding. Yes, I did do that. During the, the separation and, and the allegations of the TPOs that you filed, did you not send a text message to, to Mr. McDonald saying, giving the gate code, even though you said that you're afraid for your life? Um, I don't know what you're referring to, but I can tell you that there was never any communication during any time that there was a protective order at all. And so um, I always followed the court's rules on that, and I have been afraid for my life throughout this entire process and even still today. And that, my friends, is why Michael is a bastard man. So what makes you afraid of your life? Has there been any threats? Has there been? There any, have been. Any, there have. There was over the past year. Yeah, there was a recent video on YouTube posted where you said that you were making a threat. You you directed it to Mason and Malia. You said in that video that you had thoughts of harming me, but you didn't want to do that to them because you know that would make them suffer. And that was November of this year. So am I concerned for my life? Sure, when you make threats about saying that you have thoughts of harming me, vengeful thoughts of harming me, that's concerning. When you put private information out on YouTube that has private conversations that you and I talked about where you um, suggest that my fiance molested our daughter, that's pretty scary and psychotic to me. And it doesn't show me that you're in your right state of mind to be doing those kinds of things. So it causes me to be very scared Let's talk about and concerned. Thing. Later, Michael was charged with several counts of wiretapping. Actually, so during that, the tri right before trial, um, well, during after the trial that we had when, when my attorney was not present, I was, I was denied any you? access to my children, which I had them every weekend. And we were being good co-parents before that TPO. We'd call each other, we'd, we'd do things for the court. Remember, we have to okay. ask let one me ask, Let me ask you then. During, during that 90 days that, that the defendant did not see his children, did you not send a talk to parents letting him know that, that Malia had a rectal prolapse and that she may require surgery? Yes, I did send that message. You're her father. You deserve to know what's going on with her medically. 
I absolutely sent that message. Yeah. And when the defendant asked in regards to who's watching the children, uh, the summer who's a drug addict and her judge, or the Joe, who is known to have raped one of your, did Joe not Objection raped one of your mutual friends? Michael has suggested that Candace's boyfriend, Joe, has previously raped one of her girlfriends. And she knew about it. Nicole Ruiz. I'll allow it. Did you not tell me that yourself? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Did you not tell me that Joe raped Nicole? No, I did not tell you that. Never? No. Did not happen. Did you not talk, oh, talk, uh, <laughs> talk bad about him before when he was dating your friend? Objection hearsay, Your Honor. I'll allow it. No. So, during, after that 90 days, I mean, or did Malia require surgery? No. Did you t tell the defendant that she had a gluten allergy and you weren't sure what was going on, but you were trying to investigate it? Yes. Did, did the defendant ask if your emotionally disturbed brother was watching the children alone? Michael has now suggested Candace's brother has raped his daughter, Malia. Um, you, asked, you asked me after after I told you all of that, what male was watching my children? Was it Joe? Was it my two brothers? That's what you asked me. But I don't, you don't, I don't have emotionally disturbed brother and you didn't use those particular words. So I guess the answer to your question would be no. Did you ever go out and party and leave the kids with various people? No. So the, the, the one time that you asked, you sent the gate code and told me to bring you coffee and to drop off the kids. Did you not have a stamp on your, your hand from going out and you appeared to be recovering from a hangover? I'm sorry, I don't really understand. What what exactly So do you, you drink asking? with Candace? No, I don't drink. You I have in, I have in the past. Did um you? no, I don't smoke marijuana. So have you ever smoked marijuana? I did one time. One time. Does Joe smoke marijuana? Joe? Objection, Your Honor. She can't answer for Well, if you know. Or around the children. She doesn't. No. So after that 90 days, um, after the 90 days, the children were, were put in the, where it was granted, the, the defendant was granted every other weekend for his children. <laughs> he, there was the... There is a real lawyer sitting to Michael's right, and he is going to get lawyer revenge. The children let, his, let the father know that Joe was watching them alone, and that... Mason had, Honor, had locked out of the room. Did, did, uh, did Mason not? Mr. Did, McDonald, I really need you to ask questions yes, so that yes, I can so, follow. Counsel and I are struggling here. So after that 90 days, did Mr. McDonald not, not uh, did Mason, was, was Joe watching Mason and Malia alone? No. Never? No. So does he watch them alone? No. Was Joe watching Mason and Malia alone? No. Never? No. So does he watch Malone? No. Oh, my dear sweet baby Jesus, the patience on this woman. So do you agree that, was, that, was there ever discussions between us that we would never let strangers watch our children alone? Joe is not a stranger, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, we did have those discussions. I, I take it very seriously who watches the kids. I made sure that whenever I had a babysitter that they were drug tested, CPR certified, made sure that they had experience. Um, I wouldn't even allow anybody over the age of, under the age of 18 to care for our kids. So, yeah, it's really, really important to me um, to make sure that whomever is watching our kids is solid and safe, and um, that's something I still value. So who, who watches the children while you go out or go out and party or, or have different drinking events? Objection, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Um, I don't go out and party. I don't go, I like, honestly, I hardly ever go out. If I go out at all, then the person that watches my children or is either my parents or my sister. During around October of, of well, October of 2016 when, when Sir Donald was awarded his, or every other weekend with his children, Mason said that he was being watched, him and Malia were being watched, and that he was locked out of the bedroom while Malia was there with Joe. Change is actually going and changing it legislatively. So, And that's what I plan to do when I go up to, if I get elected and go up to Carson City, I'll be drafting 
uh, legislation for equal uh, joint G, uh, equal parenting, where mm -hmm. it'll be a set standard, not just a presumption. So that's right. one of the th things we'll focus on. The criminal law. The man on the far right is Steve Sanson. At this time, they were allies. It will not stay that way. There's so <clears throat> so much that needs to be be addressed in there too, such as the DV laws, where people are going to jail just on pure accusation. <laughs> When the acts include domestic violence, nobody is surprised they are arrested. Going to court, you're already guilty until proven innocent. So you should have God-given unalienable rights to your children, yet you go into family court, they purposely pit two parents against each other just to, to, just to get money. The family court's a $70 billion industry, and it needs to stop. It's causing so much destruction in the family units. The root cause of so many social issues, anxiety, depression, mental illness, criminal history, teen pregnancy, mass shootings, it's all happening when you don't have a fit, willing, able, and loving, uh, emotionally there mother and father. It's causing all these issues. So, we Dr. Business does not have statistics to disprove Michael's opinion because it's a half-truth veiled in a fear tactic. Then after, did, you, did the defendant not send you uh, nine felony charges for lewdness of minor and sexual assault with the name Joe Ruiz? That was another rape accusation towards Joe. Joe will also take the stand. Um, you I was concerned as, as oh. Are you asking me if you sent me a, a person's name, uh, named Joe Ruiz, the same person as my boyfriend's name that had nine felony charges? Is that what you're asking me? No, I'm asking you, did, did the defendant not send, or did Mr. McDonald not send you, did he send you those nine felony charges of lunacy minor sexual assault with the name Joe Ruiz. And then On the sex offender registry, Michael found a man with the same name as Candace's boyfriend. His name is Joe Ruiz. So Michael is insinuating that Candace is dating a sex offender. You said yes, and I said that my, my, my fiancé does not have a middle name, and that's not the same guy. I told you that in that conversation on talk, Talking Parents that that was not the same person. And then after that, you still proceeded to call CPS and tell them that that Joe was the same Joe from the nine felony counts. They then investigated, they then closed the case because um, they sat down with Joe, did an interview with him. Obviously, they did not have the same social security name. Joe does not have a middle name. This person, Joseph Drew Ruiz, does have a middle name. They're not the same person. So yes, I told you that. And then even after that, you took Malia to Sunrise Hospital and told them that she had been sexually molested. They did a full um, evaluation on her. And after that time, they still told you that there had been no sexual assault and that it was allergy related. Um, I also told you that I met with the pediatrician who told us that it was a food allergy. I had her allergy tested. I then took her to a surgeon the surgeon determined that there was no reason to do surgery, that these things naturally heal, and that the, the uh, prognosis was basically we had to keep her stool soft so that she would not continue to like be constipated. I told you all of this in Talking Parents. I kept you updated every single time. And still, to this day, you still post videos on YouTube saying that my fiance is a molester. Michael does not deserve any custody of any kind. Let me ask you, do you, do you believe that rectal prolapses could be caused by sexual molestation? Um, initially, I just listened to what the doctor said, and they said that it was caused by constipation. My mind did not go to sexual molestation. In fact, I was disgusted and shocked when you suggested that maybe my brother may have molested her, and then when I told you my brothers hadn't been alone with her, I, didn't, I, wasn't, even, I wasn't even dating Joe until a month after she had her first prolapse. And when Joe came into the picture, that's when you started accusing him of sexual mo molestation, which is disgusting because honestly, if a doctor is saying it's her diet, it could be dairy, it could be gluten, the first thing that I'm gonna do as a parent is cut those things out. Malia's, there was never even in her, any opportunity. She's never been alone with a male, so no. My mind did not go that. Is, is it possible? Sure, it's possible, but not in this case because she's never been alone with anybody that would ever harm her in that way. There isn't a single person in this family that isn't affected by Michael's insane behavior and life-ruining accusations. Did Dr. York or Dr. Robinson not say that, that it is probable that, 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 that rectal prolapse is Dr. Robertson and Dr. York, what they said to me was it was an allergy. 
and that I needed to do everything I had to do in order to follow up. So that's what I did. I cut gluten and dairy out of her diet. I took her to an allergist and she and she actually has a whole bunch of other slew of allergies which we didn't know about then which are now out of her diet which could have caused the constipation and they told me she needed to be hydrated at all times she also needs to be on um, a she's on a, a daily laxative which I gave give her in the morning um, she has to have that every morning in her juice so that her stools stay soft and since that time a year and a half she's not had one rectal prolapse since then. Michael's behavior knows no shame. None. Because he asks Candace this. Chris, were you, were you sexually molested or assaulted? Jackson, yeah. your honor. No. They never told any stories about The that. only person that sexually assaulted me was you. The only person that sexually assaulted me was you. Everyone in the courtroom is getting tired of Michael's questions. The other lawyer is just laying in wait. Did you report or file a TPO after Mason McDonald went to pay the daycare and see his daughter? Um. And say hi to his daughter, daughter. From my understanding, you were to mail a check and you were precluded from going to my school and Malia's daycare and the kids' school. So yes, when you showed up and tried to take another child from the daycare, thinking that it was Malia, um, yes, I did file a, a, a violation of the protective order because you were not supposed to be at her school. Um, and from what the staff said, um, they were fearful and um, you picked up another child, which was concerning to them. Um, you picked her up and tried to walk out with her and they had to tell you that wasn't your child. And then, I mean, they were, they're all fearful too. They're concerned. They knew you weren't supposed to be there. They had the paperwork. And then you showed up, and I mean, I understand. Did not allow them to go. Uh, did they tell you that they allowed him to see his daughter and say hi? Um, I mean, from what I, from what they told me is that you showed up. You weren't supposed to be there. You, they were fearful. You tried to take another child. They felt intimidated. Um, in fact, their entire staff purchased pepper spray after that, and they upped the security per cameras se, judge. because you. You asked a question, Mr. McDonald. You snuck in with another parent because the code had been changed. So you snuck in behind another parent to get in, um, which is all what they related back to me. And that was concerning to me and made me feel fearful that you would go against what had been ordered. Um, and so, yeah, I, I definitely did report that to the police. We can clearly see that Michael is a planner. That's what makes him creepy. Mr. McDonald not have a code, code to the daycare door? Um, they had changed the code after um, there was an order stating that you could not be at the daycare. Did Mr. McDonald have a good relationship with, with Ariana, the Malia's, uh, Malia's, day, Malia's uh, daycare provider and the manager there to bring them coffee? Well, I don't know about your relationship with them. I only know like from what they've told me how they felt about your presence in the daycare. Michael makes constant doctor's appointments for his children so we can skirt the system's rules. Oh. So during that time the, that the, before the cops got, the police got called out, did you not run up after, well, was there not a, a text message letting, know, letting you know that I was bringing Leah to the doctor that day? No. There wasn't? No, actually, I'm sorry. Off. I think that, I think that you had sent that text message um, after you left. I do, I know, I, but I didn't know until after and besides that, like, again, the situation occurred, you made the, you made the appointment, you didn't tell me about that appointment, and then when you went to pick her up, you, I didn't know why you were there. And I only found out later that the reason that you were there is because you had the appointment, but again, it wasn't your Friday. So that's why when the police were called, because what happened was the staff was very concerned, you picked up Malia, she was asleep, the staff had already told you you were not supposed to be there, that that they were fearful and one of the daycare workers like was you stepped in front of her and you were being aggressive and I was scared I was extremely scared and you were there one of the daycare time. workers said you need to hand Malia to me okay and in fact after that incident the daycare told me if there were any more incidences after that we we would be asked to leave 
because there has been so much conflict and they were concerned about the other children because you had gone in there and tried to pick up another child that was not your own. That's correct. But when, when Mr. McDonald was there, did you, not, did you see him run up to him, confront him, cussing at him while he had Malia in his arms? No. You didn't say, you're not taking a mother effer and all this? No, I definitely did not say When that. he had his daughter there and started shoving him? No, I did not. That did so not you don't happen. think Ariana would be able to, to attest to that? There's think. nobody at the daycare named Ariana. Lena, Alana, yeah. She was the one that was watching her that day. And then the director also witnessed that, witnessed the shoving. I didn't report that to the police. And that con constitutes domestic violence. Did you know, were you aware of that? Michael knows what domestic violence is because he has been charged with it several times. It did not occur. I was upset. I was concerned. I asked you to put her down. I asked you, I, I again you reminded you, like, it's not your weekend. I, I told you, I called the police. They're coming. Did you it cuss at the Mr. McDonald? No, I did not. Not at a daycare in front of children. No. You never put hands on them. No, I did not. I did not. So if there's video My main of that. concern was keeping Malia safe and making sure that she was okay. I mean, the whole staff was in the hallway. Like, they were... <laughs> Lots of witnesses, yeah. Michael is becoming increasingly stressed. He will begin mumbling under his breath and throwing blind accusations. Did you not take... Did not... Did Yesenia... Uh, Elena, sorry. Take, take Malia out of my arms and bring her into the room. No. Leslie, Malia's teacher, took her out of your arms because she was concerned. She took, in fact, she took her out of your arms and out of the building because she was concerned that you were going to hurt her and did, or did, me. And Mr. McDonald walked out of uh, there and waited for the police to come. And the police were going to give him his weekend, as I believe it was too. And then it was oh. a technical. Error. I had the paperwork. The daycare has all the paperwork. They read the paperwork. They said I was free to go with her. Michael also did something similar at Candace's parents' house one weekend. He terrified everyone. So, d did you not send? Did you send a text, uh, talking parents saying that that I'm that I'm not there. Come pick up the kids. Yes. You said you weren't there because I was not there. So, when Mr. McDonald was there. Was was where were you during this during the, the first? When Mr. McDonald pulled up. But I were you in the garage or were you in the house? I was outside of the house. I was not in the garage at that point. I was outside the house, like helping pull stuff out of the garage for the yard sale. So when, when, the, when Mr. McDonald pulled up, Joe was standing on the sidewalk. With me, yes. No, we're, he was with me. He was with me standing up like the walkway going up towards my parents' door. We were talking about what are we gonna do? Cause Joe and I had had plans to go on a date after that. So I'm like, well, I guess, you know, obviously, like, do we want to take the kids to the movies with us? Or we're, we were having that conversation at that point when you came running across the street saying you were going to kill you, in front of the kids. Objection to that. In front of the children, Michael told Joe he was going to kill him. No, no. Listen, like, I wish you could just understand that, like, like you have it in my in your mind that I want to go after you and and you know end your life and take everything from you that is not the case like the kids need you but they need you to be healthy and I've said to this court and and I, we've been here so many times like if you just got the help that you needed and you were stable and sane our lives would be completely different don't you see that so like think, if you just did what you so had during to those do, five years of marriage or six years of marriage and, and during you don't think Mr. McDonald did he not go to different various events and worked on self-improvement yeah but you also didn't follow anything that our counselor said when you needed to be medicated when you needed to see a psychologist when you needed to make sure that you were like stable and not say the same thing to you to, 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 to that you're Listen, at PMDD i was under so much stress from all the abuse postpartum it had nothing to do with my did you have postpartum depression no i did not have postpartum did you say depression. you're gonna kill yourself no times. i never said that did you Beat up Mr. McDonald. No, I never you, beat up Mr. Like McDonald. Holes in the walls. No, that never happened. Throw, throw, throwing things in front of the kids. No, that never happened. Candace has had to deal with this for over five years. Michael's craziness, dragging her in and out of court, and doing things that mentally scar their children. Eventually, Michael went to prison for nine counts of forgery, burglary, and wiretapping. 